many cultures around the world, uh, you go and travel, you say, I want to embrace the Thailand culture. I, I want to feel the Mexican culture. When you come to Russia, you get punched in the face by the culture. This is how Russia works. They're not going to smile at you and invite you to sit with them. You have to show your worth to them. And you learn that immediately because you get punched in the face if you don't. I'm in Studzianka, a tiny Siberian town on the shores of the magnificent Lake Baikal. The first video I made about a former U.S. Marine who settled here went through the roof. Not only has it wrecked up almost 2 million views, but it's also become the most liked video on my channel. Something definitely struck a chord with you guys here. If you haven't seen it yet, go ahead and check it out. You'll see how Daniel Castellan, a Mexican-American from California, found peace and totally fell for a place that, let's be honest, doesn't exactly resemble Los Angeles where he grew up. This time around, I'm not just checking in on a friend who, by the way, has some major news to share. I'm gonna get married next year. But I'm also curious to see what's changed in a typical provincial Russian town after a year and a half of tough sanctions and the ongoing war in Ukraine. So the war hits home in a way. Yeah, it hits home. The guys that are coming back from this, this conflict I hope that Russia is ready. I'm gonna live here, Constantine. People think, oh, he's gonna leave. No, I'm, I'm from here. You can find me in the, in the swamps. You can find me in this park. I mean, I've taken a dump in that bathroom. <laughs> that one? Yeah. You know you're from Sludanka if you go to the bathroom in there. I'm, I'm being serious, like, I was like, oh my God. For me, like, the smell and everything, I grew up with this kind of stuff anyways. And you're not from this town if you've never used one of these. <laughs> it's just how it is. Do you feel that the economic pressure on Russia uh, is making any impact here in Sludanka? No, not really. Uh, the people are still living like normal. Obviously, we don't have the same things that we had before. Like when you were here, uh, we saw Coca-Cola's on the floor. Those are completely gone from that store. You're walking, you're walking, and you scoop it up and you buy it. It's very low, low fee. You have to go to special stores for that now. But I mean, no, nothing's changed as far as produce and there's no impact. Stras with you? One of the first people we visited in Sludyanka was a fruit seller. Last time we chatted, back in winter, he was all smiles and full of banter. I was wondering if he's still positive despite the mounting economic pressure and the ruble taking a major dive, losing almost 25% of its value in August alone. The ruble fell to its lowest level in 16 months. One penny is all it takes to buy an entire Russian ruble. A ruble is basically worthless. Ваша жизнь за последние шесть месяцев она стала лучше или хуже? Ничего не изменилось. Вообще ничего не изменилось. Вообще ни насчет продуктов, насчет народа ничего не изменилось. Вообще. Ну стоп, стоп, стоп. Курс рубля упал на 20 процентов. Ну сейчас. Э... Один доллар сто рублей. Я вот как бы радикально буду относиться к этому. Это даже лучше сделано. Знаешь почему? Деньги здесь остаются. Вот допустим, я уже смотрю, начал дом строить себе. Понимаешь? Не хочу за границу ехать. Зачем? Потому что рубль ничего не стоит. И многие так делают сейчас. В этом году многие стройки начались. In case you didn't catch this. He thinks that the weak ruble is actually better for the local economy since fewer people can afford to travel abroad and instead tend to spend money locally. Sludyanka has also seen its first tourist boom in over a hundred years. Sure, this town might not look like a typical resort with spas and fancy restaurants, but it does have Lake Baikal, the world's largest and purest lake. And with the ruble valued at almost a penny, this place suddenly seems like a pretty good and affordable getaway spot. В этом году многие стройки начались. 
здесь, в Слюдянке? Здесь, да, частный, частный. Они никуда не едут, потому что бесполезно. Мани очень дешево, поэтому они в планах. Они не признаются, но это я вижу. Huh. По строительным магазинам, по всему вижу. This is true. This is why it's really hard for me to find something right now. Like land and a house. It's really hard for me to find land to build a house. So everybody's building. Well, one thing's for sure, the departure of uh, Western fast food chains uh, hasn't raised an eyebrow in Studenka simply because there were none to begin with. But uh, fear not, this town still has a KFC, King Food Studenka, easily the best and, well, let's face it, the only fast food spot in this little corner of Siberia. A lot of the people come here from school, from after work and stuff like that. Is it, uh, is it kind of a, like a fancy place for families here? It's, or is it more for students, for it's, it's younger for people? Everybody. It's for everybody. It has its different timings. After school, people come. Uh, I've seen uh, older people, they take out. So it's for everything. Yeah, this is it, guys. The chicken wrap. Looks legit. Yeah. Have you heard anything about KFC, King Food Studenka joining other respectful uh, fast food brands and, uh, you know, leaving Russia? No, this KFC will never leave Russia. If they do, they have to take the whole town. The culture in a small town here is survival. The climate teaches you, first of all, when winter comes, you stay warm, you survive. Okay, and now as autumn comes, the mosquitoes is going to be, every single thing is a task. Surviving is uh, sort of a, a motto, is a way of living for a lot of people in, in, in these communities. You learn that from the Russians. Why? Because they're not going to smile at you and invite you to sit with them. You have to show your worth to them. And you learn that immediately because you get punched in the face if you don't. When I visited Daniel in Sludyanka, no one wanted to punch him. On the contrary, locals wanted to take pictures with him. What's that? What's that? Oh. Oh, photo? Okay. <laughs> Jesus, you, you're famous now. It all started with our first video, which not only went viral, but most importantly, was very well received in the local community. No film was People recognize me as far as Novosibirsk. I've been to Novosibirsk, Irkutsk. I mean, I go to these cities and they say, you know, hey, you're the American from Sri Lanka. Do you ever see an American? Yes. Are you New York? No, Los Angeles. Los Angeles. They embrace me and they take photos because here's our, our American, not anybody else's. And that's how I feel. It's not a star, it's just, that's our own. Look, I'm gonna show you the multiculture of this region. This is the true melting pot of the world. Salam alaikum. Skolka malinki kartovska. Skolka vidro nad. How many buckets, buckets do you need? Adin, adin, adin. Just. 150. Sama, kuda? Los. Where am I from? Uh, Los Angeles. California. Mexico. Da. Tambo. A kuda ti? Узбекистан. Даниэл э, воевал в Афганистане в составе США и... Куда живет? Калифорния, США. США? Да. Американская, да? Да. Я боюсь. Почему? А почему вы боитесь? Да. Не, не, не. Она говорит, что она боится, что вы из Афганистана. Нет, нет, нет. Она не понимает, что они не понимают, uh, blood, right? Now I tell them, Niet, ya Mexicanski. I tell them, no, no, I'm the Mexican American. It's really important for me. My mother and my father are Mexican. 
Он говорит, что его родители мексиканцы, он вообще-то мексиканец. My blood? Mexican. She's from Uzbekistan, but she's in Russia. It's the same with me. I'm Mexican, but I lived in America. Uh -huh. And I served in, the, in their military. I can't deny what's in my blood. Like my mother, uh, I carry her with me. Genetically, I'm Mexican, right? Um, my citizenship has given me my freedom. I'm an American, but I mean, I'm a, I'm a Mexican. So I, I always now correct them. Я мексиканский. It, it means the world to me that they know I'm a Mexican American. Ask her, ask her this. It's really important for me. Um, if I was American, uh, American blood, would she really see me differently? Because I don't see her differently no matter what. А если бы он был прям американец, американец, вы бы к нему как-то по-другому относились? Или нет? Yeah, I think it's a yes. Seeing as Daniel is famous now, a lot of doors were opened to us in Slyzanka. Believe it or not, but we ended up visiting an absolutely random old lady in Slyzanka whom we'd never met before. She just saw us on the street and invited us over. What's going on? <laughs> I don't know how we got here. I mean, when you told me she invited us to come in, I was mind blown. She invited us in and she let me walk around. I could grab everything and she was so welcoming. Just 15 minutes in, we were presented with a bottle of fine cognac, the kind that's typically saved for special occasions only. За что будем пить, как думаете? За что? За что? За мир. Потому что если разрежется третья мировая война, никому лучше не будет. Вы опасаетесь этого? Да. That's what a lot of people are scared of, Konstantin. I mean, if we have her saying that, she's feeling it in a, in a house, in a wooden house in Siberia. It's the truth. Yes, the war in Ukraine is something people talk about, maybe not publicly, but you know, in their houses, or maybe something you pick up on. Or... Like you're walking through the street and you see uh, people are looking at videos from the conflict, like, pa -pa 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 -pa. Like, you can hear it while you're walking down the street. We live in a town that has given a lot to the special military operation. Everywhere you go, you'll see the posters of, of the men who have served. So a small town like this, you're going to have uh, people paying attention because it could be your son, it could be uh, your cousin, it could be anybody. So the war hits home in a way. Yeah, it hits home. We live like a block away from the fire station and we have a guy that also went there from the fire station. It hits all, man. Our conversation with this nice old lady quickly took a heavy turn when we found out she has relatives in Ukraine and takes the conflict very much to heart. Как так вышло, что два народа, которые жили вместе в советское время, а сейчас в состоянии вот такой войны? Деньги продали, вот и все. Кто кого продал? За деньги купили американцы этого, сейчас это наши комедианты. Зеленский. Зеленский. Смотрите, а с их точки зрения они защищают свою страну вот от вторжения? Ну какую России? страну они защищают? Они с 2015 -го года они все время обстреливали этот, эти районы, которые действительно этот Ленин отдал Украине. Донбасс. Донбасс. Весь Луганск, Донбасс, Запорожье, все это было это относилось к России. She hasn't spoken with her relatives in Ukraine for a long time. The people don't want what the government is doing. We don't understand why they're sending money, why are they supporting this Zelensky. We don't support the war. Does she understand that? No. It's a small gift for you. Look. Спасибо. I want to say. If you could ask her before we leave that, if I could come visit her again in the future. А вы будете не против, если Дэниел как-нибудь к вам еще на С невесты заходи, может, я ее знаю. How does it feel to follow American news all the way from Siberia? It's weird. This is an NBC News special report. 
Former President Donald Trump has just posted on social media that he is being indicted. The former president once again made history today. Former President Trump has been informed at this hour that he has been indicted by a federal grand jury. The weirdest thing about getting news about back home is getting it from a random person in the street when I'm walking. Oh, the American, have you heard of this? They tell Xenia some crazy story. I'm like, I didn't know, now I know. Now I know that uh, Trump's getting indicted because some guy in, in the middle of the street is saying, hey, did you hear that Trump is getting indicted? Okay, thanks. What do you think Americans are America, is a friend of Russia or not a friend? Well, I can say that, but my friends are the ones who are not in Vrkutsk. You don't think that, right? Do you believe uh, the 2024 presidential elections in America will have an impact on the war in Ukraine in any way? A hundred percent. The Ukrainians are running out of ammunition. Running out of ammunition. Arms and ammunition for the war in Ukraine running low. The people are done with Ukraine. We have Maui to worry about. We have Los Angeles, Philadelphia, New York that's rotting. You don't think the people are tired? They're tired. They don't want one more dime to go to the, the, the conflict. Five Republicans battling to become their party's 2024 presidential nominee. Next presidential the election, the Republican will win and they will put an end to this disaster politics. Ukraine is not a paragon of democracy. This is a country that has banned 11 opposition parties. It's, it hurts my heart when I see things that are anti-Russia. It's not that I'm brainwashed, it's just that I live amongst the people. Uh, she says she knows you. Ah, хорошо. Откуда вы его знаете? Просто мне кажется знаком. Все, все друзья братья. The way they they're so proud of Russia is the same. The Americans are so proud of America. It's America. So the Ruskies are the same way. They're they're just proud in their own way. It's just so sad that this is happening. Not just because of the relationship, but because of the death toll. This is insane. When I last saw you, you mentioned that you've been dealing with PTSD ever yeah. since returning from the war in Afghanistan. Uh, could you explain what PTSD is for those unfamiliar with it? When a man is in that, in that environment, you put that dog in him, it's hard to take the beast out. I came back so, so wired that if I'm sleeping and I hear something, that's it. I'm on and I'm alert. Hey! Yeah. I'm pushing down that way. Hey, I had bloodlust. I, I, I want to go back and kill. I want to be back in that stress. What's up? What's up? What's up? What the fuck? When I talk about my PTSD, the Russian guys sometimes laugh at me. Like, why, why, why you complain about this? Um, it's not that I complain about it. It's just that I don't want to deal with it. I know in this culture, in Russian culture, they'll never care enough to like make themselves look weak. I didn't, I didn't go to the doctor until like eight years after I came back from the war. That's because I was ready to kill people. So these men that come back, I hope that rush is ready for them. What aspects of your life here in Sludanka help you manage these flashbacks and this feeling? The nature obviously is one. I take I take the, the, the train tracks and I go into nature and I disappear. And while I'm doing that, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about, like I said, thinking about my family, beautiful things. If I ever need fire, this right here is the gift from the gods. This uh, was given to me by Lars from Survival Russia. This is how we do fire. There we go. <laughs> so you got everything you need. I mean, if I need food, I can bring it here and heat it up. Uh, if I need a little bit of relaxation time, I can go to sleep. So this place keeps my mind busy with alien things. It's like coming to a different planet when I got here. That's how it helps PTSD. You have to go to a place that is not normal for you and your brain just starts processing other things. I still have nightmares. I still have, but they're not that bad. They're not as bad as they were before. It was, I'm grabbing things and I'm hitting things or I'm blacked out. Now it's more, I wake up, oh, where am I? Okay, I'm, I'm home, I think. Yeah, I'm home, yeah. 
So here's where I found out what name I want for my daughter. Uh, Amelia Larisa. Uh, in Mexico, we give two names. So the first name would be Amelia because I love this name in Spanish. And Larisa is Xenia's mother's, uh, was her name. You know, my woman's, my fiance's mother died. And I want to honor her with naming a daughter after her. <laughs> She's not so weak. You have a man who has his role and a woman who has her role, and they do different things. And I love that about it. It's a team here in Russia. Uh, I even got in trouble for letting Senya cook the shashlik. And many people were saying, men, this is the role of the men. What are you doing? If my sisters had a flat tire, I would have to help them. It is my job and my duty to fix their car. This is a man's job. If, you, if you're an American, like an independent woman, she'll call somebody or she'll try to do it herself. Like it's so mixed up. If you offer to help her, they get, they get uh, insulted. I don't like it when a woman gets insulted because you're trying to be uh, a gentleman. Get yourself a strong Siberian woman. <laughs> Fishing, which is Daniel's newfound addiction in Sludyanka, has led him to Ruslan, a 12-year-old boy who also likes to fish. Sadly, his favorite rod broke, but Daniel got him a new one. See, when I was young, I, I never had the opportunity to meet anybody who could give me things because we were all poor. And now when I have more than I need, I know I can give to people that deserve it and that can use it well. Это первый иностранец, которого ты видишь? Да, лучше первый. Я, я не, даже сначала не понял, что может так по почтить надо в нас и хотели. So he thought uh -huh. this was a joke, that you're not a real American. Oh. You're not a real foreigner. Oh, this no. is a, that this is some kind of a joke. Я, я, я турист. Uh, я учу русский. Я не uh, говори по-русски. Я... I'm new here. A lot of people will judge me perhaps and say, oh, you're an American trader and all these things, but I think that I'm a true patriot because being American is looking for that freedom and Siberia is a version of the American dream for me. But I am still a proud American. If you're a true American, you're, you're, you're a good person. If you're a good Russian, you're a good person. That's what these two countries have in common in my heart. I can love Russia and I can love the United States. And that, my friends, is what my mama taught me. That's my Mexican side. Thank you.